small SUVs are all the rage at the moment, and the Audi Q2 is a perfect example. So it's based on an A3, and it's jacked up and looks slightly tougher. However, Volkswagen is now doing the same thing with the Golf. So this is the T-Rock. Like I said, underneath the skin, it's pretty similar to a Golf, and it's jacked up, and it looks cooler. Interestingly, Volkswagen owns Audi, and so these cars share many of the same parts. And that begs the question, out of these two, which should you have? To decide, I'm going to see how stylish they are. Dare I say it? Quite exciting. Compare what they're like to drive. All round, it's, it's pretty nice. It's quite a lively little thing. Check out their interiors. It won't quite itch, you scratch. And test their practicality. I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty similar. But first of all, let's talk money. The Volkswagen T-Roc, it starts from £19,000. Whereas the Audi Q2, it's a little bit more expensive, it starts from around £21,000. However, if you go on carwow.co.uk, as you can see here, you can get a saving of almost two grand on the Audi Q2, which brings the price down. So it's really important that if you're looking at one of these cars, go online, configure your car, and you'll get offers back from dealers to see the price that you're going to be paying on. Needless to say, the two cars I've got here aren't entry-level versions. That's the rain-topping version of the T-Roc. It's got the two-litre turbo petrol engine in with four-wheel drive, and this is an S-line version of the Q2 with a 1.4 turbo petrol. So they're rather expensive, and their list prices are both over £30,000. So make sure you go online and see what offers you can get back on them. It's dead easy to do. You just plug the details of the car you want into our configurator, hit submit, and then wait for offers to come back from our approved dealers on both cars available in stock or for specific builds if you want a less common colour, such as this one. Yellow? Who ordered it in yellow? Actually, it sort of works, doesn't it? Especially with that darkened side blade at the back. Kind of reminds me of Audi's R8 when they have that in yellow. Hmm. The look of the Q2 has really grown on me, actually. And I'm very taken with the T-Roc 2. It's actually quite a departure from the norm from Audi's less flamboyant German cousin. Volkswagen normally does very straight, simple, boxy designs, but not this. Oh, no, there's creases, there's curves, there's shiny bits. It's, dare I say it, quite exciting. But can the T-Roc's interior live up to its exterior? After all, that's one area where VW always does well. Quality cabins. There's quite a few things I like about the inside of this car, such as the seat design, they're comfy as well. The layout of the controls, very, very simple. The infotainment system, which is pretty slick to use, though I should point out that only the range topping version gets satellite navigation as standard, though you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to use your phone satellite navigation system. Also like the fact you can get it with digital dials, which look very smart. But if you're expecting normal VW quality standards in here, it won't quite itch your scratch. Yeah, look, scratchy plastics pretty much everywhere. The interior of a Polo feels plusher than this. You get soft touch materials on the dash of the Polo. I mean, it's just, I don't know what they've done. Why have they done it? Why? The only way I could calm down was by jumping into the Audi. Its cabin is far more soothing and is exactly what you would expect from the brand. The interior quality of this Q2 is on another level. The squidgy effect on the top of the dash. You've got this lovely aluminium trim here, the steering wheel on this car, it's all sporty and nice. Obviously, there's lots of upgrades and options in this thing, which do push up the price in typical Audi blooming fashion, such as the upgraded infotainment system. But I do like the way it works with the swivel wheel. It's nice and easy to use while you're driving. This one's also got the virtual cockpit, which I think is probably the best digital dial system there. Let's make it go widescreen for the sat nav. It's great, I love it. It just feels special. It's expensive, but it feels expensive, which is, which is fine, I guess. And I could say the same about the car's rear passenger space, because it's only really just fine, I guess. Now, I've just about got enough room in the back of this Q2. You can see just about enough knee room and headroom. I can get away with it with the seat in my driving position. However, if you get someone taller back there, it could get a bit cramped for kids, and anyone over six foot is gonna struggle. Another thing about the back of this car is the fact that the windows aren't that big, so it can feel quite dark. It doesn't help the fact you've got this big rear pillar here as well. So mm, a bit dark and dingy. When you try and carry three abreast, the people in the outer seat won't like it too much, but the middle seat actually, you know, it, it isn't all that bad. It's quite soft and squidgy, and I still just about got enough headroom. 
So how exactly does the VW measure up in terms of practicality? There's plenty of room for adults here in the back of the T-Rock. It's pretty much the same size as a Golf, really, so it's all well and good. Really, if you want to carry rear passengers regularly, then the T-Rock is a slightly better bet. With three in the back, the middle passenger will feel a little bit squeezed, but the outer two will be happier than they would be in the Q2, which seems to have a slightly narrower body. The T-Rock also just edges the Q2 when it comes to fitting a child seat, as there's just a little more room to manoeuvre the seat into place than there is in the Audi. But these differences are quite minimal, as are the differences in interior storage spaces, which are adequate in both cars. Now let's talk boots. I'm going to start with functionality. So I open up the T-Rock, you'll notice there's a little bit of a load lip, but it's not too bad, so it's easy to slide items in and out. Then if I remove the load cover, it'd be good if you can store it in the car, such as underneath this false floor, which, oh, look under there, there's a space saver spare wheel. That's handy. However, no, I can't fit the load cover there, which is a bit of a shame. One thing I've noticed here, this particular car I've got does have through loading if you want to carry long items, which is handy. And when I fall down the seats, they lie pretty flat. Now moving over to the Q2. How does this fare? So I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty similar. Oh, look, a little bit of a load lip, just like on the T-Rock. Now, if I remove the parcel shelf, look under there. It doesn't have a space saver spare wheel, but you can get one as an option. So will this fit? No, not quite, just like the T-Rock then. You'll notice there's no through loading there though. However, you can get this car with split 40, 20, 40, so you can actually fold down the, the middle seat entirely. But of course, that's an option you have to pay extra for it. But let's fold down these seats while we're at it and see, yes, look, we have got a flat load bay, very much like the T-Rock. So what's the big difference then? Well, actually, it all comes down to size. And when you compare the size of the boots in these two cars, the T-Rock is the clear winner. With the rear seats upright, the Volkswagen has 40 litres more space than the Audi. And when you fold those seats down, you have almost 250 extra litres to play with. So overall, that means the VW is the most practical of these two cars. But is it also the best to drive? The T-Rock is a good all-round car to drive that does pretty much everything well. So it's comfortable, it's quiet. The engines are good. It also handles well, steers sharply. What it does lack is that darty, sporty feeling that you get with the Audi. However, that said, it still can be a little bit of fun if you hustle it down a back road. The VW is a car which won't offend you in the way that it drives. The problem is that it won't exactly excite you either. And really, you kind of do want to be a little bit excited by these cars, as don't forget, they do cost a bit more than your normal run-of-the-mill hatchback. Jumping from the T-Rock into this Q2, it feels like a slightly smaller, more nimble car. It doesn't necessarily handle any better, but it gives you that sense that it's just a little bit more sporty. The ride on this car is a little bit firmer over bumps, but then it's just on the standard suspension and it's riding on 19-inch alloy wheels. If I was you and I was buying this car, I'd probably go with slightly smaller wheels because it does make it a bit more comfy. And on the top two specification cars, you can get those adaptive dampers like that T-Rock has got. And then that's got a comfort mode. And then, yeah, it's really good over bumps. And the engine range, pretty much the same as the T-Rock. The only difference is, is that this doesn't have the 1.5 litre turbo petrol. It's got a 1.4, but it's got the same performance. It's a good engine. All round, it's pretty nice. It's quite a lively little thing. The steering just seems to respond that little bit quicker, makes the car feel a bit more darty, a little bit more lively and fun. Or maybe that's just the yellow paint and it's a placebo effect. <laughs> Whatever the reason, the Audi certainly feels the more exciting to drive. But how does that affect the overall verdict? Well, the T-Rock, it's a very good car and it, it stands out. The only problem is, is that the interior just doesn't live up to the exterior. It just feels a bit cheap on the inside. And that's where the Audi Q2 comes in. Now, admittedly, it's not quite as practical as the Volkswagen, but it's just so much nicer to be in. And let's face it, that's what these cars are all about. They're supposed to make you feel more special than a normal small family hatchback. And I just think that the Audi Q2 does that a little bit better than the Volkswagen T-Rock. And that's why it wins this test. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.